The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good Friday morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien, coming to you live from TFNN, 9 a.m. Eastern Time, Friday morning. we got about 24 minutes to go until the start of trading, and you got markets in positive territory. Just off the highs, though, a little bit of a sell-off in the last 20 minutes to about 10 points in the S&Ps. You're still positive by about three-quarters percent as we come into the open. Quite a week to the upside so far. NASDAQ 100, you're positive by almost a full percent, 12,440. you got Amazon higher today. We'll jump over to some of the other FANG stocks in a moment. Dow up two-thirds percent right now. The Russell up about one percent as well. Bitcoin, you talk about a run, man. Bitcoin's over 21,000. So much for an 18,000 handle on Bitcoin. Bitcoin up almost 1,800 bucks technically in the session. Weekends always providing potential volatility in crypto. And how about crude? So much for getting an 79 handle. Just like that, we're back to 86 bucks from 81. And folks, you're talking about, that was barely 24 hours ago. That was five in the morning on Thursday. It's Friday, 5 in the morning yesterday. Crude was pushing $81. This morning, we're pushing 86 Volatility, not out of that market just yet. We got some action in currencies, as I'm always talking about, right? Uh, let's jump over to the dollar before we wrap into everything else going on. DXY, that's a back off from almost 111 on Wednesday. Yesterday, you chopped around 110. We hit a low of 108.36. You're still well off where we closed out yesterday's action in terms of from 109.64 down to about 109 right now in the dollar index. Now, I mentioned that as we go back to the gold contract. You get the dollar pulling back. We have gold accelerating higher. Gold gives back some of those gains. You're still up about $10. And, you know, look at where we are on this gold chart, folks. You got to go back. Almost five years to get a full context of the run we had higher from 1167 in 2018. I've pulled it up many times, but if you're trading gold, I would be taking a look at it on a grand scale, depending on when you're holding it, right? If you're trading it intraday, I wouldn't be looking at a five-year chart, but if you're planning on holding gold for a considerable period of any time, you're right in an area of support in gold that's going back basically to June of 2020. You're talking about more than two years on gold. That also correlates to an area right near the 382 of the entire run higher from 1167 to 2089. You're chopping around in that area. And where did we just bounce from? 1700. Now, here's what I'll say is if you're in gold and you break below 1700, that's going to be an area where we basically accelerate. I mean, that's coming into the COVID volatility of 2020. You see that we came into COVID at about 1700, dropped with every other asset to about 1450. The only reason I hesitate, because I like this low in gold from a risk reward perspective, is that to drive gold that much further, you would have to see the continuing trends in the dollar index. Okay, now look at that dollar index over that time. Look at that dollar index compared to where we were. You look at gold priced in dollars, and it's been in a consolidation for the betterment of what? What did I just say? Two years? Well, you back things up to the dollar index, the dollar index on that same area when gold first crossed into that $1,700 area coming out of COVID, here's your COVID volatility in the dollar index. The dollar index was at about 100. You dive down to 90 and now you're at 110. Meanwhile, gold can't get any action during that time at all as it bounces around. Now you jump over to the Euro US dollar. We're back above parity, but here's the thing. Now we don't need to go that large on the Euro US dollar. Just putting this thing on a year going back to where the slide really began at the beginning of the year boy here's what i'll say about this one we're bumping into the upper boundary line look where we just tested folks okay i'm even going to drill it down even further look at how close we are to that upper trend line you're talking about a trend line that maybe sits at 101 and we got 101.2 actually and we got to 101 quite a pop from where we were at 98 but that's going to show you how close we are to that line and let me put it back to a daily because, boy, if I was uh, a buyer of the euro right now and I saw that bumping into that upper trend line, folks, you're talking about since March, okay, and you're talking about uh, a parallel line to the nice trend that this has going to the downside that has been intact for the better part of, what, eight months, 
seven months, something like that. And we've bounced off that top portion four separate times pretty consistently. Yeah, you can get slightly above it. Okay. Now you take a look at the pound US dollar. Similar. And none of this having to do really with the queen, folks, um, even though, of course, you'd, th there'd be some people talking about it. But look at the difference in the pound. OK, now, not parallel lines. OK, I was playing with this even last night. Let me back this up. And what I did was I extended left, I extended right. OK, let's cancel, cancel the left extension and cancel the left extension of this one. Well, let's let's extend that one even further because it does kind of match up with where we came in from November of last year. OK, but even if you just zoom in on the action, just like we did on the euro from the beginning of this year, OK, the last seven months, pretty well defined channel line. But check out the pound pound bouncing near the bottom of the channel line. Meanwhile, you get the euro right bouncing off the top of that channel line. What does that mean? Well, maybe uh, the pound reaching a point that it has been overextended to the downside. And maybe that means the euro is overextended to the upside right now. And the euro has no business being at parity when it could be on its way lower to 95 or something like that. Meanwhile, the pound uh, might be catching up is all. I mean, look where the euro is. The euro right now is at 100. OK, basically parity. And that is where we were July 14th. We're talking about two months. It's amazing how time flies, folks. And I'm going over the, these currencies because this is going to drive a lot of the action. The currencies you could say are driven by yields, yields in some way driven by currencies, the market impacted by all of that, of course. So the euro right back to July 14th, pound US dollar, still not even back there. Okay, so the pound is still weaker than the euro over the period of about the last two months as the pound needs to get back to 118 just to be on par with where the euro is trading, okay? So keep those in mind, those channel lines, man, they're showing up, they're pretty distinct. Uh, both of them in pretty distinct channel lines downward, that is the macro take, okay? Until the dollar breaks out of one of those, the trend is downward in a big way, lower lows, lower highs. It's a pretty decent range. When you're talking about bounces on the pound dollar, you just go to the top of this range. You're talking about pushing 118, 120, depending on how long it takes you. And the Euro US dollar, OK, maybe the euro US dollar doesn't deserve to be holding up as well over the last two months. Right. It actually has uh, performed pretty well as you got quite a little bounce there from when you were at parity on July 14th, almost made it up to 104. You're sitting at parity again. So you're at the upper boundary line. Be interesting to see what happens here as you bump into parity 101. I mean, is the euro really going to break out of this right now? They just hiked rates. Uh, the ECB did. And they're expected. So they hiked rates 75 basis points, right? When I was reading the articles yesterday, economists are expecting that they're going to go to 1.5%, which will be the neutral rate. That's only one more 75 basis point hike. They're already dealing with a slowing down economy. And is that going to tame the inflation that's already that's that's giving them so many problems as well? I don't know. And can they go further? That seems like a tough one as well. Meanwhile, you get the Fed. They're hiking 75 basis points meeting after meeting after meeting, and the chairman's being as strong as he can with his words, as in, how does the euro catch a bid right now? Some point in the future, folks, you know, three, six months, nine months, depending if the U.S. gets things under control and they can stop hiking and maybe potentially even move forward to a cut, but not just yet. S&P's up 30. We'll be right back, folks. Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC capital market assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. 
everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We get the S&Ps right now up about 31 points. NASDAQ 100 up by 129. Quite a pop across the board. This is the third day, I believe, that we're talking about higher prices right now. S&Ps, you were pushing 38.83. Just like that, we're 150 points or more higher from that level at 4,037 uh, as we commit to next week. So we get CPI data next week. We get a Fed the week after that. It just doesn't... Uh, it's all going to be on that CPI right now, and then it's going to point to getting ahead of the Fed, and we'll see what happens. Now, today, folks, we got a couple schedule changes. We're going to have live programming all day, okay, to make sure that we can make that happen. What we have going on is that Larry uh, was unable to be in his hour, so we've moved him around. So he's actually going to be next covering for Basil Chapman. So Larry Pesavento is going to be live from 10 to 11. Our man Jacob Shoup, he is going to be covering for Larry from 11 to till 12 12 o'clock we have fast market live as we normally do uh we have steve rhodes out as well so he was out at 11 and larry is usually on at one which he can't make because he has an obligation they couldn't get out of today so we have our man dave white covering at one o'clock and he'll do two hours live from one till three so larry's coming up next at 10 jacob's going to be live at 11 fast market at 12 dave white live from one till three and my dad tom o'brien wraps up the week from three till four so get it on your calendar stay tuned uh should be an interesting friday because we're talking about cpi data next week we've gotten quite a lift here we're sitting above 4045 3900 seems like i mean you know how quickly is the market going to remember that last Friday, folks, you came into 11 o'clock. You caught a little bit of a bid, okay? You popped up to 4,020, and we closed out the week at almost 3,900. Um, everybody's going to remember that of last Friday. So keep your fingers fast, man, on today. Okay, let's jump around to some of the stories. This one caught my eye for sure. Bank of America says an appalling mood 
fuels $11 billion U.S. stocks exodus. Whatever the mood is, the numbers do not lie in terms of some of the uh, outflows going on right now. Inflation, war, and tightening among headwinds for risk assets. I would say so, folks. Bank of America's own, own bull and bear indicator falls back to zero. So the nation's stock funds had outflows of $10.9 in the week to September 7th. That's global data cited by the bank. The biggest exodus in 11 weeks led by tech stocks, which saw withdrawals of 1.8. Global equity funds had outflows of 14.5. $6.1 billion was poured into government and treasury bonds. Now, this is in the week to September 7th. So I don't know, does this go Wednesday to Wednesday? I guess it might, right? Uh, strategist pointed to rising inflation, the war, and the increasing cost of money as being among factors driving investors away from stocks, fueling volatility and credit events such as the rate investors pay to hedge positions in two-year German, German paper, not quite pepper, soaring to the most in data going back to June of 2008. Excuse me. Uh, rises for the first time week after slumping for the last three. Now, you know, just to zoom things back here, folks, okay? This was through September 7th, all right? This is September 7th's day. But boy, you put this thing on a daily, okay? And you zoom, September 6th and September 7th was the low. So yeah, we had a lot of outflows there. Maybe the selling has subsided for the moment, which is allow the markets to lift from 3,900 to 4,036. I mean, that's almost a... 3% pop over the last three days. But boy, you know, we, we've extended so far down. Okay, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to say how much of a bounce are we getting here if this is just a, a bounce within a lower trend? Taking a look at the Fibonacci, we are very close to approaching the 382, man. 382 is at about 4,053, and the 618 gets us to about 4,158. Uh, but we're coming right into that 382. So all we've done is we've just bounced, folks, over the last three days, less than a 0 0.382 where this market went over a period of August 16th to about September 6th, as in not quite uh, a strong indicator yet. We'll see what happens at some of these Fibonacci levels. Very tough to imagine that this market is going to soar higher, folks, with, with where the Fed is. How many data points do you think the Fed needs before you really hear some strong language with Chairman Powell that he's confident inflation is under control? I can't elaborate on that in my head because I can't figure out the amount of data that we're going to need where you're really going to see a monumental shift. The first pause would be, you know, a, a market moving event, to say the least, as in even an indication that they're considering pausing to allow the moves that they've made to play out, which may take an extended time. But that's not even close. We're going to get a hint of it on CPI. I'm not sure that I'd want to be buying into the CPI number when we're sitting at 4,035. Because no matter what it comes with, folks, that data is not going to do it. You know, so if you force the chairman, in my opinion, to make a speech right after we get the CPI data, almost no matter what it is. Now, I'll always say almost, folks, because anything can happen. We, we've had energy prices going down, right? We're going to get CPI. It was a pretty decent month for energy prices. The market knows this, though, okay? But it was a pretty decent month for energy prices. Just zooming in on the daily Let's see where we kicked off. We kicked off August at about $98. Hard to remember. You started off August, folks. This is where CPI is going to matter, okay? You started it off at 100 bucks. It's going to be comparing itself month over month to where we were in July. Well, July, July you started off at 110 So it started off at 110 in July, talking about crude, finished the month off at about 100 Compare that to what's going to be in August. August, you started crude off at 100, and you chopped around between about 87 and 100 for the month. So that's decent prices. And guess what? You're going to see that continuing trend because we're already one-third of the way through the month of September, and crude and energy prices are probably going to help us out again because we kicked off the month at 100 bucks again, and we're chopping around at 85, even getting that bounce right now. But the disclaimer, okay, energy prices are going to help. But you're going to be seeing numbers that even on a core basis are probably pushing 4.5, 4.8. Does anybody know in the den what the expectations are right now um, generally for the market, whether it's the headline number or you're talking about the core number? They're going to be nowhere near what the Fed needs to be indicative of inflation being under control. And that's the thing you want to keep on your radar in a big way. So we'll see what happens. Uh, jumping back to this article, though. The numbers don't lie, folks, in terms of outflows, and I would agree. 
you know, surprising that the market gave itself such a reprieve in between the chairman coming out of Jackson Hole because all he said was they were going to be data dependent. But you had a Fed chairman coming out saying they were going to be data dependent when the CPI was saying 8.5 percent. You know, that should have been the big sign over the chairman's shoulder when he was saying we're going to be data dependent, saying, hey, everybody, data dependent means we're at 8.5 percent CPI, but almost at basically a record at this time. Yeah, you better believe they're going to bring it. Awesome. Thank you, Dan. 8.1% uh, uh, and uh, August, maybe 6%. Big numbers, folks, is what they'll be looking for. And that's right when we come back. So everybody, you know, they're going to be getting their bets in place today. Add to that number. And we got less than four minutes to go until the opening bell. And all the markets, as I mentioned, nearing that 382 in terms of a bounce off the lows. Right now, you get the S&Ps up six tenths percent. And let's jump around to some of those FANG stocks. Amazon shares. Yeah, that's some decent lift. Giving back some of those gains, though. Amazon's almost giving back a full dollar from where you were, 132 to 131. We check out Apple on their big week of an event. Pretty, pretty tame action right now. 155.46, you're up about a dollar. All the tech stocks higher as you get the NASDAQ 100 up about eight tenths. Microsoft up two bucks. We got Tesla shares trading higher as well. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back for the open. of booming inflation where your purchasing power is eroded there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold vista gold's flagship asset is the mount todd gold project in the northern territory of australia this is australia's largest undeveloped gold project we are talking a world-class gold project in a tier one mining district this is a large-scale low-cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development stage gold project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text, either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Welcome back, folks. we got markets open. you got the S&P up 26 points. That's about two-thirds percent. NASDAQ 100, you're up by nine-tenths percent right now. The Dow up 167 points. you got the Russell up by 15. Bitcoin having quite a day, sitting at about 21,000 right now. You could say saving itself from that 18,360 mark. This solid blue line I have in this chart, folks, that goes back almost five years to December of 2017, which is where futures began trading when they went live on the CME December of 2017. And to put in some context, if you weren't aware, there it is, folks. That's when futures start trading. Talk about the heck of a short, man. For the first time, you could trade Bitcoin in a regulated exchange, and they provide you the ability to short that on a regulated exchange. Uh, it dives from 20,000 to 3,000, but boy, that was the run up to 60 and 70,000 almost the earlier about a year ago, and just like that, pretty interesting, right? This is a monthly, that monthly just chopping around right now at that 21,000 price point, which is basically where futures started trading five years ago. Five years ago, right? They say that crypto is in its infancy, but you see that time flies, folks. You know, it's, it's, I, I've said that two or three times already, this show, but it is interesting when you talk about that we're five years into it trading at 20,000, and remember, there was a big run up to 20,000. That's when it had the legitimacy to get traded on the CME, okay? So crypto, you know, you're, you're talking about almost a decade that we are approaching in, in crypto. And yeah, uh, maybe, maybe you've reached a point where you consolidate, you give it all back over five years, and this is where you can build a base in Bitcoin at 20 or 21,000. At least you have your, your back to the wall. You know, if you're in this thing and, and it trades below where you've been chopping around the last four months, I, I wouldn't be in it because there's nothing stopping this thing from going down to at least 14,000. If not, maybe coming back and testing the lows we had of about 4,200, which is not that long ago, folks. That's only the low of COVID. You came into COVID at almost 10,000. No reason why this thing can't get cut in half again. If you're playing with crypto, just make sure you know what you're risking. There's nothing wrong with being in Bitcoin. There's nothing wrong with buying a full Bitcoin. If you know that that thing might go down to three or 4,000 or even 200 bucks, who knows? All right, we'll jump around. Uh, this article is from a couple days ago, but I want to touch on it briefly because I was talking about the Fed and so much to do with interest rates. So the market is pricing in 75 basis points for the September meeting to the tune of 69 out of the 75. So almost a full price in of the basis point they're talking about. Now, this, I believe, was written on Wednesday. Not sure where that is sitting right now, but it's probably pretty close to the same ballpark. If they go... 75, that's going to put them, what, just above 3%, I believe, in terms of where they'll be. The market thinks that they're probably going to need to go to about 4 or 4.25%. Four uh, the increase in policy tightening expectations followed a solid jobs report last week. You got Loretta Mester repeated Wednesday. She thinks the U.S. Central Bank needs to get rates above 4% by early 2023. You're not going to get inflation back to 2% unless you create slack in the labor market and the jobs report still shows demand for labor is strong. I would agree with that. Um, when you compare this to Europe, folks, they just went to 75 basis points. They're going to try to get to 1.5%, okay? We're going to probably get to 4 or 4.25%, four okay? And when you look at where we are now, the yellow line here is after the chairman made his post-Jackson Hole speech. Okay, market was very, very accelerated in terms of how they're going to hike. Well, look where you were September 7th. It's even higher. They're going to bring it, folks, in terms of swaps pricing around an 80% 80 chance, 80 chance of a 75 basis point move. They're going to hike probably into March of 2023, and then you could see things fall off from there. But March of 2023, folks, is six months away. And if we go to four and a quarter percent and we do that in the next six months and you have the ECB sitting at maybe 1.5 percent and how is that going to behave on the ECB as in can they handle it like we can right now? Are their jobs going to continue coming in as they face an even tougher inflation than we do and they have the Fed hiking on their Fed? I'm talking about the ECB, right? They have a real, real problem with inflation that puts our problem almost to shame, especially when you tie into the energy deal that they might be dealing with this winter that goes with it. I mention all of that because I tie it back to the currency conversation we had, okay? Very difficult to imagine things swinging around just yet. Yeah, you're going to have up and down swings, folks. I mean, if you're looking at this dollar, all right, that's a monthly. 
but let's just back things up on a three-year weekly. And let's just back it up from where we began the year, okay? Even looking at just what we've done over the last eight months or so, a 382 retracement of this move could bring you right back down to where you were. Folks, that's only less than a month ago when, when the dollar was at 104.5, okay? Doesn't mean you're not going to get that type of volatility that you could. But over the next three or six months, I see it very difficult for people to get away from the dollar when you have the Fed so intent and you have our economy able to handle things so much better than it appears that Europe will. And they are in a tough spot, man. Uh, and, and yeah, and, and that's where they find themselves in the market is reacting to that across the board. We jump over the euro US dollar, see how that's moving right now. Sitting basically at parity, and if you missed the beginning of the program when I was talking, I mean, yeah, you can't deny that's bumping up against the upper trend line, folks. Pretty well defined, a nice parallel line, upward, downward. It's almost 45 degrees to the downside, man. Uh, but the euro bumping up against that upper boundary line. Meanwhile, you get the pound, okay, maybe a little bit oversold. You could say catching up. The pound bouncing off almost the bottom of that channel line as it accelerated lower. You get the euro trading right where it was on July 14th, the pound well below that level. So, you know, both of these can stay within their channel lines. And meanwhile, right now, you might have the ability for the pound to bounce a bit. Meanwhile, you got the euro trading a little bit lower off the top of its channel line. All right, let's check around and see how some of the FANG stocks are open. And Amazon catches quite a little lift, up 1.4% for Amazon shares this morning. We jump over to Apple. Up four tenths percent. They give it back on the open a bit. Microsoft shares, there's a pop for you, up 1.4 percent. Google shares this morning up 1.1. Let's check out Meta shares, 2 percent to the upside. Let's see how Kathy Wood, 2.7 percent to the upside for Kathy Wood. Some of these stocks, Zoom, Zoom catching a little bit of a lift, up 3.5 percent. Roku's been in trouble lately, but that's a lift up to 2.6 percent. She's got a big position in Teladoc, up 1.4. She's got a lot of action in Tesla, up 1.6 percent as well all right let's see what else i had pulled up here to talk about yeah this one is interesting in terms of uh bankman freed or fried how do you how do you say it right but uh he is buying 30 percent in scaramucci skybridge capital this guy's just putting money everywhere man ftx adventure ftx ventures that's his uh equity yeah, his venture capital unit was the expression I was talking about. Uh, so they're hosting conferences. They're doing it in the Bahamas. They're going to use some of that money to buy $40 million worth of cryptos. He's really solidifying himself. Don't have to tell you, I'm sure, if you're around. And so digital token exposure accounted for more than $800 million of the overall $2.5 in assets managed by SkyBridge at the end of June. Not bad, man. Managing $2.5 billion, and that's that's. That's going pretty much all in, man, when you're talking about 35 to 40 percent of your multi-billion dollar asset management business based in crypto. It's not surprising that he might go into business there. All right. When we get back, we'll jump around to some of the companies that are making moves this morning. We got DocuSign out with their earnings. They're trading higher in a big way. We'll take a look. So the queen passed away yesterday. Uh, pretty cool. She just took a picture three days ago. Check that out. She was looking great. 96 years old. We'll be right back, folks. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. 
His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Got the S and P's right now. You're up 29 points. You got the Nasdaq 100 up 140. The Dow up 180 points right now. Jumping around, uh, taking a look at some of the stocks with action today. And you talk about action, man. A lot of upside on some of the stocks that even they were looking at on fast market yesterday. DocuSign, they have their numbers after the bell, strong numbers. But you give back some of that right now. You're up about 10 percent. You were a size 68.88. You give back about five dollars, but still decent numbers for DocuSign. Zscaler. Out with their numbers climbing even higher. You're up 17% right now for Zscaler following their numbers yesterday. Pretty decent numbers across the board. Uh, and we're jumping back to Tesla. Whoops, excuse me. TSLA. Tesla up about 1.6%. Folks, if you head on over to the front page of TFNN, our man Larry Pesavento, he is doing a live trading webinar a week from this coming Tuesday. So it's going to be here before you know it, man. September 20th. He'll be doing that from 9 a.m. till 2 p.m. Eastern Time, folks. Five hours live trading from a half hour before the market opens at 9 in the morning till 2 p.m. Larry doesn't really trade for the final two hours of the trading day. That's why it goes from 9 till 2. It will be archived if you can't attend all five hours. It will be archived just if you want to watch it again. Uh, he'll be live trading as well as going over some of his methodology, talking about ABCDs. A to B, C to D, Fibonacci is, of course, pattern recognition, trend change patterns, all of that in there. Check it out on the front page of TFNN. It's $295. You gain a month of his newsletter, Fibonacci 24-7, which knocks off almost 100 bucks in value, if you think about it that way, with $97 usually on the monthly price. For subscribers out there already, your next payment is included in going to Larry's webinar. So check it out on the front page, folks. It's a week from this coming Tuesday. And when you sign up for that, you gain immediate access to the newsletter. Your your month doesn't start the day of the 20th. Your month starts right when you sign up, folks, okay? And usually we give people that month all the way through the webinar. So you actually gain a few days of the newsletter if you sign up ahead of time because we'll give people a month. We'll give them a month really starting on September 20th to make sure they have a month after the webinar. So if you sign up right now, you gain access to Fibonacci 24-7. And uh, in 11 days from right now, you'll be in there for the live trading event on September 20th with our man Larry Pesavento. And as I mentioned, a little bit of a time change on some of the programs, if you didn't hear that at the kickoff of the program. Uh, Larry is going to be next from 10 a.m. till 11 o'clock, okay? So we moved a few people around. Larry, just for today, he's coming up, filling in for our man Basil Chapman from 10 to 11. Our man Jacob is filling in from 11 till 12 because Steve is out. Fast Market's on at 12 o'clock to 1. And then our man Dave White is doing two hours from one till three live and Tom O'Brien live from three till four. So live programming 
all day at TFNN. Okay, jumping back, just because I found this one interesting, folks, you got to mix in, you know, some of life because you can't just live the market all day. You can, but you better give yourself some, some things to appreciate the beauty of life and nothing like living until 96 years old. If you've ever... If you have not checked out the program The Crown on Netflix, folks, a uh, very cool historical series. I don't think I've wrapped even up all of it. I really got into season one. I think I've watched some of season two. But the historical perspective of how the queen's life played out, especially in the early days of her life, even as a young child, uh, very cool. And the, the, the way it was done, very well done from Netflix. I think they spent something like $200 million on that Crown series. Uh, I think I remember them saying her wedding dress alone just – in Netflix cost them almost like thirty thousand dollars to to have a replica of the dress that the Queen actually wore in terms of the details they put into that series. So if you're looking for some good historical, check it out. Uh, but pretty interesting. Three days ago, you know, she looked pretty good. They had a uh, an event for uh, formally appointing Truss in her new position uh, as the Prime Minister there. And, yeah, she looked pretty good. September 6th there and uh, her final public picture, and, and she passed away yesterday. So they got King Charles stepping in as the new head of state, as they would say. Uh, monarchs, royalties, you know, I don't, I don't get too into it, but that's, that's their thing, England, of course. Okay, we jump around, folks. Let's see what else we got pulled up in terms of stocks. Uh, jumping down the line for some of the other stocks, Restoration Hardware. So they're higher, okay? Now the, they're higher because I was watching already. The luxury home was lower pre-market. They expect third quarter revenue to decline between 15 and 18 percent more than the market was looking for a 10 percent pop uh, drop. Excuse me. They were looking for a 10 percent drop. But there must be more to the story than that, man, because restoration is up 2.8 percent. And, yeah, this thing has had quite a pullback. OK, so a lot of negativity priced in from where it consolidated for the better part of last year. You come back. And give it all back from COVID, and you're sitting at 269. You're up 3% on their numbers. We see how DocuSign opens, holding up about 8% on their numbers for DocuSign right now. And then what else do we have? Yeah, so Tesla, let's see how they're trading, because they potentially may be getting into lithium, right? Up 1.8%, almost pushing 295. I mean, quite a run. This thing on Tuesday was trading at 265. They're going to. Uh, Consider building a lithium refinery for EV battery production in Texas. And that is due to a filing, I believe, that that comes out. So the plant would be focused on the development of battery-grade lithium hydroxide and be the first of its kind in North America. Construction could begin in the fourth quarter of this year. The project will reach commercial operations by the fourth quarter of 2024. Two years is what they're aiming for. You see the type of lead time, right? Just, just to be able to do that. Okay, what else do we have pulled up here? Yeah, that's it for right now. Let's jump around and see how some of the airlines are trading. Uh, I did have the article pulled up. All the market's higher, man. S&P's up by 32. We got American up by about 1%, putting this thing back on a daily, even put it back for a three-year weekly to get the full context. Yeah, I mean, I can just take that off. It's giving it all back. You're just chopping around it. Almost pre-COVID lows, man, of $14. Excuse me, COVID lows for American. D Delta right now. Interesting Delta. Hovers around the 618 of the entire move it had. You're sitting at about 3247. Now, the article I did have pulled up here is that you have two House Democrats seeking a review of whether airlines use COVID bailout funds for staff buyouts. $54 billion in taxpayer aid prohibited them from laying off workers. They were urging those workers to take buyouts or offer extended leave of absence. Uh, and they're uh, going to press the airlines on whether they use the aid packages for buyouts. I don't know how that plays out. The one thing I will say is that, you know, the paycheck protection program, and I don't think this is what they're talking about, but you get so much stuff just thrown at the wall. And no matter where you lie on politics, folks, that whole deal with like the Paycheck Protection Program and the loan forgiveness and how that's being brought out against um, the student aid forgiveness, even though I don't agree with that, but you could cut a knife through anything in terms of the disagreement that you could have on anything. Uh, but that program, specifically the Paycheck Protection Program that all of everybody's catching hell for for those loans getting forgiven, that was the design of the program. You know, it was basically a grant program that was designed to make sure that you abided by the deal that you were going to keep your workers on the payroll. And so just by doing that for forgiveness, they facilitated the grant. So 
anyway, that's come up many times before. Uh, but yeah, $54 billion. And I can do a whole show, folks, in terms of airlines not preparing for the inevitable, which is somehow a flight shock. OK, I mean, folks, if you ran an airline business like they run it, you would be BK all day long, because unfortunately, we live on a planet that there are shocks to demand for travel occasionally, whether it's war, whether it's a pandemic and not planning for those. You just plan for failure unless you get a government handout. We'll be right back, folks. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call Newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call Newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&Ps up 30 points. And again, stay tuned. We got our man, Larry Pesvento. He's coming up live next from 10 to 11. Jacob's going to be live from 11 till 12. Dave's doing two hours this afternoon. Tom O'Brien doing three to four this afternoon. Uh, and jumping back to that airline. So they're looking into how that money was spent. Now, it's interesting in terms of the numbers of the airlines. The carriers began 2020 with about 456,000 full-time employees. That fell to 364. So you're talking about almost 100,000 in November of that year. Now, the aid that they got for the pandemic, okay, came with the fact that they couldn't fire anybody until October 1st. This article is from June of 2020, just going around. Uh, take severance or gamble on the October 1st layoff. So the airlines were prohibited from laying off or cutting the pay rates of employees through September 30th under the terms of the $25 billion in aid. 
And so what they did was they put out severance packages to them and told them that firings are coming October 1st. The clock's ticking. That was the package. Uh, they're prohibited from laying off or cutting employees before October 1st. Uh, but they've already gave the employees until this month to decide on taking a buyout. If not, gamble it up when you come back October 1st. I mean, that's that's pretty lame, the money they got, and you run it out for six months. And then what happens? Yeah, we're back. And now what's happening? We gave them all that money, and now we're paying higher costs because they got less employees, less planes, less routes. Everything's delayed. It's all a mess. Could have been designed a little better. And airlines, they get away with way too much, folks, because – uh, we need airlines. I agree. So we can't let them fail. If you can't let them fail, they need to be regulated in some fashion because uh, they give way too much out in terms of buybacks, dividends, everything. They keep no money on the rolls. Inevitably, unfortunately, there are supply sh uh, and demand shocks to that market and they keep nothing there and then they cry that they need the money. All you got to do is regulate them because that's the fashion because we need to bail them out, unfortunately, because we do need airlines. So remember that next time around. Stay tuned, folks. I appreciate you starting your day with me. Larry's up next. Jacob at 11. That's right, Duffy. Break them all up. There we go. Stay tuned, folks. Larry's up next. Have a great Friday. <laughs>